So thanks everyone for being here today. I, I really, really appreciate it. Um, and this has been a, a pretty rough month, right? Uh, there's just no way of denying that. The, the market sell-off has been pretty tough. Um, if you've got money in 401ks, I spent, I spent probably two hours talking one of my relatives off a cliff yesterday because um, they just couldn't quite handle how much money they'd lost in their retirement accounts. And it's really easy at times like this to kind of shut down, to become very negative, to um, become completely unproductive um, in times like this. And that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about today. The things that we can do, although there may not be a whole lot we can do as far as trading goes, unless you're, um, you feel comfortable trading a really quick price action and those really expensive options, things that we can do to kind of um, stick to a a, um, a good work schedule, a schedule where we're actually feeling productive, things that um, improve us as a trader. And you guys feel free to shout out anything here. Um, and a couple of things that we've kind of already talked about this week you know one thing um, that you can certainly do is we could spend some time developing out our strategy so if you like the three eight trap strategy if you like the round of bottom breakout strategy if you like you know virtually any strategy that um, you feel fits you better is to really sit down and work out your plan and develop that strategy not only develop it but turn on some paper trade account and practice it work through the rules and the discipline to improve yourself in that strategy if it's an uncertainty on how to use something in your charting software a good productive thing to, to do is really start to study and work on improving that skill in your trading software. You know, all the years that I have used TC2000, I know that there is a lot of things I don't know about it. Um, yeah, I think so. I think so. Volatility stop. Um, can definitely save accounts and and really work on work on improving your skills at charting you know one of the things that um i've talked about many many times is just taking a chart and pulling it back now we can we can run a chart forward at any speed that we want to and say you you're looking at this yesterday and saying how did i miss this short trade or why didn't i trade this short trade in here and there could be a lot of reasons for that it might be options or just crazy stupid high priced but what if we just pulled the chart back and then slowly went through that chart one one um candle at a time and start looking at these patterns and developing out these patterns so that we can productively trade these. So when you move a chart forward with TC2000, you can use the bracket keys. You can drag that, drag that chart back and then use your bracket keys to move that chart forward. And what we're looking for is we're looking for those trade setups. Now, in the 3-8 trap, you can see we've had no trade here. We have a crossover down, a crossover back up, and a crossover back down. That's chop. We have no trade here in um, that, that um, chart yet. And as we move this chart forward, if we just start watching, paying attention, looking for those patterns that could be a short trade. It's possible someone could catch this short trade right here. Okay. Watching, waiting, paying attention. We have a short trade set up here. Okay. 
and it plays out. Okay, so watching for those um, potential trades and practicing that price action, looking at those patterns. Um, no, uh, can't they, they? I've never heard anyone call a candlestick a tick. Um, they generally use ticks um, to describe uh, futures markets. Okay, so if you have <clears throat> if you have a um, a futures price that is right here and it moves up, well, with the diamonds anyway, if it moves up a single point, that's called a tick. Now you can actually change a chart to a tick chart using thinkorswim. You can come over here and change your TC2000 to a tick chart. Okay, and there's not going to show any data here, but your your tick is going to be that um, on a on a time chart like this, tick is going to be like as a trade comes through. Okay, I wouldn't recommend you use something um, that fast um, or even remotely that fast. Um, in TC2000. Okay. Now, if you if you talk about the S&P 500 or the S&P 500 futures, a tick is going to be a quarter of a point. S&P 500 futures are divided up into one point moves and there's four quarters obviously in one point so we have one point here and it's divided into this is a 0.25 a 0 0.50 0 0.75 and it's quarter ticks okay but when you're when you're trading the market itself, um, when you're trading normal stocks, normal ETFs, things like that, um, you're going to be most of the time using something that is a time based candle. OK. So let's think about the things that we can do. Um, Lauren's question is a good question. So what can you do, Lauren, to learn about that? Do a Google search. Go to YouTube. That's right. Seek out that information that you're questioning. Do some study. That is a positive practice during a market like this when there's not much we can do. It's a positive thing to um, advance your skill set, advance your knowledge in trading. We had someone the other day ask a question about, well, when does a recession become a depression? Great question. Turn on Google and search that. Find out. Advance your knowledge about the market. Advance your knowledge about the tools. Okay. Yep, Saturday morning e-learnings. <clears throat> the things that you can do to improve your skills. <laughs> There's Ed's definition. <laughs> <laughs> That's right.
we can do there's so much we can learn about the market i'm 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 never done learning about the market learning about the way things move the the price action um, stuff is fascinating to me um do yourself a favor take a great big list of stocks when there's nothing else to do take a great big list of stocks and get naked in that chart and start diagramming marking up patterns trying to figure out where is an entry where's a short for a long or where's a long where's a short what pattern is it that is going to help you identify an entry into the trade look for support resistance in the chart look at those carefully and look for those clues that price action always gives us for potential trades i i can tell you guys you can spend um 12 hours a day doing this for weeks you're going to learn so much about price action if you do that Now, I'm not suggesting that you need to do spend 12 hours, but um, but you know what I mean to work through work through that information. Okay, work through that data, work through the price action. Where do we find good trades? How do we how do we determine when things start to turn? What's going to help us identify those patterns? Is it an indicator that we need? Is it something that helps draw our attention to a particular pattern that gives us that opportunity, the 15 minute to trade? Or it, what, what time frame it, do we feel is the most effective for us? where we can really identify that price action, where we really see the price smooth out and it makes sense to us. Those are positive things that we can be doing right now. When it comes to your trading platform, I've been using Thinkorswim as a trading platform almost since its inception. And I can tell you without a shadow of doubt, I don't know everything there is to know about Thinkorswim. Not that you need to know everything to be effective, but you need to understand the things that you can do that are important to you. You know, bring up your Thinkorswim. Go in and watch the videos that they provide. Study the different orders that you can make. Improve your efficiency. If it's Tradehawk, do the same thing. If it's trade station, do the same thing. Those are going to be positive skills that when the market improves will help us in our trading. Build that confidence. Okay. You you would you guys would have thought I was a psycho years ago. And Ed was just telling me how he hauled out about a pickup load <laughs> of paper uh, from his office because he did the same thing. We were constantly, we're, he and I are, are kind of weird in this. We're chart nerds. Okay. We're kind of data nerds. Yeah. And we would print everything out. I would print out charts, mark them up, write notes, tape it to my wall. I had stuff, I mean, there wasn't much room on the four walls in my office of places where I hadn't taken a chart pattern, marked it up, written it out, placed it on the wall. I had binders full of um, charts and data and spreadsheets and and uh, stuff to analyze me 
Now, I'm not telling you everyone has to go through that process, but what I'm saying is the more of that work that you do, the more you improve as a trader. Not only that, what it does is, is it also improves your confidence as a trader. You know, I've asked the question several times over the last couple of weeks of Ed, Ed, are you interested in trading? And he's answered really emphatically, no, I'm not interested at all. And you know, that kind of tenacity, that kind of focused decision only comes from practice. He doesn't even waver on that decision. This is my decision, and I know this is right because I've worked through the details. So if we do those, make those kind of efforts, practicing, marking up charts, focusing on price action, maybe adding an indicator. Maybe it's an indicator you feel you need to study to determine whether or not it's something that you need or should even have on your charts. Going back in the price action and prove whether it works or it doesn't. Those are positive practices that you can do in times like this. Okay. Those are things that will make us better as traders when this is over. <laughs> That's right. We have scars and they're sensitive. <laughs> And we're sensitive about them. We don't want more. <laughs> and I'm just trying, I think it's just important that we know, you know, you've heard me talk about this quite a bit lately. Is It's about knowing you, where your lane is. And I know where my lane is, and I know that I'm comfortable in my lane. And you know, the, the other thing is, it really doesn't matter what anybody else is doing around me. I'm going to stay in my lane. If you can, if you know, uh, have noticed, it doesn't influence Ed at all. What if other people are trading? In fact, he will congratulate other people that have made money in the market, but it doesn't influence his decision making because he knows what her, where his lane is and you know guys trading is personal every one of us have that have those those personal aspects that we need to deal with in the market we're all different and that's one, one of the reasons why you can't perfectly copy someone else's trade plan and make it effective for you you have to make it your own Every trade you have to make your own. That's right, GP. Man's got to know his own limitations. Okay, so figure out what that lane is. Um, build yourself a plan. This is something that I'm sharing in the TC2000 um, class. And it's just a, there's, whoops, not that one. Um, it's just a very simple trade sheet that I that I made on Word. Now, I will tell you guys that this trade sheet sits on my desk all the time. Every week I make another one. Okay, and every week I go through and I fill out this information. Every week I do a self-check. Where am I at? Am I staying within my lane? Am I practicing my rules? 
And I know some people think, come on, you don't have that on your desk. I have this on my desk every week. Not only that, I have a binder of all the old weeks. I like to track and see whether or not I'm progressing or getting better or worse. If something is affecting me, I can't know that unless I keep records. Down the side of this sheet, you'll see if I make a winning trade, it's recorded here, made 800 bucks. Lost 200 bucks. And I'm keeping a tally to make sure that I'm working toward my goal every week. Okay, those are important things to do. I talked a little bit about this this week, but one of the things that I ask myself every single morning before the market opens is I ask myself, are you ready? See, we each have an emotional makeup that can affect us in our market, in, in, in our trading. And that emotional makeup, you know, if we've had a bad day, if we have, you know, we've heard about one of our friends being sick or like Ed losing a neighbor this week, those kind of things can affect our decision making when we look at the market. We can find out whether or not, if we ask ourselves that question, am I prepared for the day? See, a lot of times I think traders tra take this business too lightly. We are going, when, we, when the market opens, we are heading into battle with some of the best and brightest in the business. We make money by being smarter than them. They make money by being smarter than us. It's a zero-sum game. Somebody has to lose for somebody else to win. Okay. Should you be going into that battle lightly or rushing in? Oh my gosh, yeah. It's five minutes before the market opens. Oh, I've got to hurry up and turn on the computer I'm, and, and start trading. Think about how that, I mean, any athlete, anything that someone's good at takes a lot of preparation. It takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of repeat. It takes a lot of focus. And if you're not focused, if you're not prepared for the day, if you're feeling affected, and, and it's easy right now, it's, is it isn't it easy if you watch the news to just become totally depressed? I was joking with Rick the other day that, um, you know, my lifestyle, the things that I do, I work a lot of hours and so I'm home. I'm home a lot. And normally, heck, I could be home, never leave the house for a month. But then the government tells me I can't leave. And all I can think about is the things I want to do so other places. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know I shouldn't go places, and now I want to go everywhere. That's kind of human nature, right? <laughs> So what we need to do is we need to maintain our discipline at all times. And particularly when we face the market, you know, one of the things that I did last night, because I have that, seriously, I want to go places right now. And I don't know why, because that's normally, uh, you know, uh, well, that's not true. I, I mean, I'm out and, and doing things all the time, but, um, I don't necessarily have to go to another place to do it. I always have things to do. And that was really bothering me last night. 
So I do what I normally do. I picked up a notepad and I started writing out the things that I needed to get done here. Instead of being gloomy about the things I can't do, be productive with the things that I can. Right? Make that list of things in your trading that you can be productive at. Yeah, that's right, Lauren. Um, I, I definitely wanted it. And, um, but what I know is I give it some time. Those rocks aren't going to go away. And assuming I survive the coronavirus, um, they'll be there at another time. I can still, I can still climb through that canyon. But if I allow myself to get depressed, to stop working out, to stop training, to allow everything else in my life to start falling apart because I'm, I allow boredom to come in. You know, none of us should ever, if, if we have a list of things that we should be getting done or would like to do, we should never be bored. So find that production, production in your trading world. When you sit down at the computer, well, today might stink. There may not be much that you can do. Okay, but let's th figure out how we can be productive. Hey, that's, that's awesome. Um, historical analysis is a real good thing on price action. You can see how tops and bottoms get formed. You can see the different patterns they, they produce during that period of time. You can read about what was going on during those periods to create those psychological moves in the market, how you might be able to recognize them in the future. Yep, experience is important. So going back and doing that, that's good, that's good work. That's productive work. Okay. Is this making some sense, guys? I, I don't wanna I I Let's let's think about this together, all of us together. Are there things that you have in your trading that you need to learn? Maybe you feel pretty comfortable with the Greeks. Maybe you don't. If you don't feel comfortable with the Greeks, it might be a good time to be studying the Greeks. Right? You may feel comfortable with buying directional calls and directional puts, but do you understand credit spreads? Might be a good time to start studying credit spreads, right? Put on credit spreads in the paper trade account, open that up in the analyze tab and work through the details. Don't know how to use the analyze tab? There's another project. Learn to use the Analyze tab. Hedging, yes, study hedging. You know, one of the first things I do nowadays is if I wanna learn something new, is I turn on YouTube and I start watching videos. Somebody out there has done a video that will make perfect sense to me. And I'm working through different aspects to learn how to do something new. Thank you, Vern. So if this market keeps up like this, what I was kind of thinking, and let me ask you guys if this makes sense, is during the day, during our normal RWO, we'll take, we'll take one subject. 
We'll take one subject like maybe the Greeks or maybe just Delta. And we'll dive into that and learn together the things that we can do, okay, to improve ourselves as a trader. Rather than, and, and honestly, in a, in a market like this, or, is it very productive for us to sit and watch the price action? Now, you guys know that all of these videos already exist, right? The videos that I'm talking about on on Greeks and on, um, you know, different strategies, they already exist in the Right Way Options eLearning Archive. So you can start that process right now. You can always go there and start picking up that information, right? The things that um, can be important to you. And, you know, the thing is, um, we all forget things, right? I mean, I, I know I do. I think I've got something down pat, and then six months later, I, I'm questioning myself, do, do I, what did I miss? And I go back and I study again. But we'll try to do some of that. We'll try to incorporate some of these things in the RWO sessions during the day and try to be more productive than trying to chase around dangerous price action until we start to see some of those good setups beginning to form. Okay, let's be productive in our trading. Yep, yep, that's right, Lauren. It's easy to easy to miss things. That's right. So turn on YouTube. Do a search. If it's an indicator, if it's a pattern, if it's a strategy, turn on the RWO eLearning Archive. Look at the RWO um 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 videos that are already out there there's now a lot of them are just the daily videos but there's 750 videos on youtube go through that information not really sure about how to plan a trade now's a good time to figure that out not really sure about how to price an option correctly now is a great time to figure that out not really sure how to place a con conditional order. Really good time to pick up the phone and call. Think or swim or your broker, how do I do this? And then practice it. Yeah, lots of, there's lots and lots and lots of information on the website. You know, for example, I know a lot of folks don't, don't even try this and, um, and I, I, I really wish they would. Let me see if I can, I gotta get the website. Why don't I have a website browser up? Huh. I always have my hit and run candlesticks browser up. Um, if you just go in here and search, maybe you want to search on a, a particular candle pattern, um, um, whatever that might be, just drop it in here. Um, bullish engulfing. Search bullish engulfing. And there's going to be lots of information in here about bullish engulfing candles. Open up an article. Read about bullish engulfing. Here's a piercing pattern. Oops, that was one of my blogs. Read about um, any of these patterns in here. reversal patterns all of this stuff is in here on the website 
tons and tons of good quality information that you can learn from. There's that inverted hammer we talked about yesterday. <clears throat> lots and lots of information in here. So um, go through and study this stuff. The more you know, the better equipped you are to identify those patterns. And one thing I would suggest is when you, when you do something like this, when you read something like this in an inverted hammer or a hammer pattern, it's one thing to read this. It's another thing to flip on the chart and then go through and find that pattern and identify how that might have made you some money. Day trading, um, ask, ask in the room. We can talk about day trading. Um, you guys know I, I did that for several years. And day trading is just nothing more than faster speed pattern recognition and trading the chart. I mean, it's, it's all price action. So if you can read the price action on a slower chart, you can read the price action on a faster chart. The, the things that you have to do though in the day trade, and a lot of people aren't comfortable doing this, is you've gotta be able to make those instantaneous decisions. That's right, Bianca. If you can, if you can see the 3-8 trap pattern on a daily chart, it's, it's the identical pattern that's going to show up there's our 3.8. It's the identical pattern that's going to show up on the short term chart. Right now it's all short, but there's our short term 3.8 trap short patterns. And that one that we talked about just a few moments ago, right there. If you find yourself, and it's it's going to be easy to feel this way, guys. If you're watching the news, trying to keep up with the news, and you kind of almost have to keep up with some of the news right now because it's certainly affecting the market. Um, it's depressing, right? We hear about, I don't even know what the numbers are today. I'm, I'm assuming they were higher than... Um, Heck, we jumped up to 16,000 cases yesterday here in the United States. Um, we know that this thing is going to explode over the next couple of weeks. What's the number today, Ed? Yeah, they are. They're, they're, it's going to grow exponentially for a while. Or 20,000, yeah. So it, it, it can be kind of depressing, right? But what we have to do is we have to do a self check. And um, let, me, let me talk about that for just a second. Um, we're all human and we're all um, affected by the things around us. And we need to ask ourselves every trading day, um, are you ready? Are you prepared? Because we all know that this stuff affects us from, from time to time and, and it really starts to pile on. And it'll pile on even more because one of the things we, a lot of us in this room, how many of you know someone directly affected by the coronavirus yet? Probably not very many of us, right? But soon that's going to change. You do, Jonathan? Soon that's going to change and all of us are going to have people that we know affected by this. 
And it's going to be hard to not have that affect us as traders. Okay, so we're going to have to do that self-evaluation. That self-evaluation every single day when we're setting down to trade, am I prepared? Am I ready? Am I, am I mentally prepared for this day? Because if we approach the market unprepared, well, what do you think is going to happen? The prepared mind that came to the market today that was ready is going to take your money. Yep, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to lose money. So do that self-check. You know, one of the things that um, I do this a lot in coaching, and one thing that always surprises me, is that folks will set down just as the market opens, turn their computer on. They've not looked at their current trades. And the first thing that they do is start rushing to find a new trade. They're not managing their current trades. They haven't even looked to find out whether or not they should be taking a profit or closing the trade. It's all about the, the rush to acquisition, the chase to the next trade, right? Have you prepared yourself so that you know that your current positions are set correctly, that your stops are in place, that they've been reevaluated? Okay. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, that's right, Nigel. Um, the virus can be, uh, you, can, you can get it more than once, and um, there's no cure. And in fact, there's no immunity for it. How do I, GP, are you asking when I say recover? How do I define recover? Well, it all depends on the time frame that I'm trying to trade. It's a good question. It all depends on the time frame I'm time trying to trade. And you guys see me do this just about every single day. I'm going to draw a line on the chart. And that 15 minute chart won't show me any recovery until we break that downtrend and hold support and we see follow through buying. We begin a trend, an uptrend. That will be the first sign of a recovery. Now that's how I define it. I need to see follow through. I need to see buyers pushing this up. Okay. So if you if you look at a 15 and you say 15 is just not for me, GP, it's just not that's not my game, then you know, go find the time frame that is your game. Where does recovery begin for you? Okay, and it's not that hard to identify. Okay, well, know this, GP. When we start coming up out of here and we start holding lows, because remember, if on an hourly, this is not going to be two days. As a general rule, this is going to be a week or more. What's going to happen is volatility is going to drop very fast. Oh, recovery from Corona. I, I, 
when we start to see a country's rec recovery is when we're going to start to see that curve start to start to diminish rather than go up. Right now we're in the upside of that curve, infections increasing. It's when we start seeing the number of cases declining that we start to see the recovery. Now, everybody is talking about, and I don't know if this is going to be true, this is all speculation and guess, but they, because the virus never goes away, um, it means that we could have multiple waves of this where we, we start to see that diminish and then it spikes back up. Okay, so it's going to be a battle for a while on this thing. And, um, you know, the, the best thing we can do is, is just maintain, you know, do what you're, you're expected to do. Stay away from other folks, um, you know, um, keep yourself isolated from those dangerous areas. And that's, that's the best we can do to stop it. at least at this point, until there is some kind of a treatment plan, a, a vaccine, a, something that will help combat it. it. Won't cure it, but it'll help combat it. <clears throat> okay. Oh, thank you for watching those videos. I, I appreciate that. I'm glad they help. Uh, the, the reason I do that, guys, is that that became my preparation for the day years and years and years ago. Um, it was one of those acts that I made. It was a it was a conscious act to go through and think carefully about the technicals of the charts to try and determine how I wanted to approach the market for the day. See, if I know how I want to approach the market for the day well before the market opens, then that sets my course for the next several hours, right? Because if I look at the market and say, there's nothing for me to do here this morning, I can't trade this volatility, I can't, I can't make heads or tails of the price action, then that tells me I don't have to rush at all in the morning looking for new trades or trying to find new trades. That's my job today is to maintain my current positions, watch those carefully, work on building watch lists, looking for future trades, but I don't have to be looking at other trades. And so that preparation in the morning helped me a lot in grounding me because I know I was tremendously affected by news and, and emotion and things like that. I would watch these financial networks, Fox Business and, and CNBC, and I would be dramatically affected by that. I would be all amped up and rush around. And so literally I, I made a conscious decision to shut that stuff off. I don't, I don't watch any of that. I do run the CNBC app on my phone. I see the headlines and I'll read the stories from time to time if it's something that I think could affect the market. But I know that affects me, so I eliminated that from my life. Right? And the more of those kind of things that I identify that affect me, that I can eliminate, the better I come, the stronger I become as a trader. Okay, so I'm glad some of you find that, you know, helpful because I know that that made a massive difference for me. It put me in that process of preparedness. How do I approach the market for the day?
All right. So doing these kind of things and staying positive, you know, do that self check and find out, am I, am I emotionally okay to trade today? I'm, I'm telling you, if, if we start seeing parents and, and um, grandparents getting sick and dying, as a result, we are going to be emotionally affected. It's going to probably create more damage for us if we trade in those circumstances. Yeah, um, and there's a lot of folks out there that they just want, I don't know, they're tied into that gloom and doom. Um, um, and they're always going to be there. I, there are some folks that just, they just can't help themselves. Um, when it comes to that, they, they just, they can't be positive to save their life. We, we have to, if we're going to be productive in the market, we have to focus hard, though, to um, avoid getting caught up in that. You know, and, and some of the things that you can do are, are simple things. You know, um, like all this walking that I do. Sometimes I, I feel guilty because I spend so much time out there kind of training for what I want to do in the future and these trails and things like that. I feel a little guilty about the time that I'm spending doing. So I, I told you guys about that app that I picked up. It's called um, Charity Miles. Every mile I walk, money gets sent to um, wounded warriors. Hey, I can do that. That makes me feel good about helping out that way we can do things to help other folks um, and our trading life is the same way our trading life we can we can find someone that we relate with in the room and then work together you know one of the greatest benefits of hit run candlesticks and right way options is that we work as a team And if you find someone that's kind of on your same level or someone that needs help, you know, contact that person and see if they want to work together. You might find some people that live in your same area. Where you can actually get together. Call each other. You know, um, load Skype onto your machine. Load Skype onto your machine and make it a practice. Hey, every day you talk with this person that is a is is someone that you work with. Someone that where you're helping someone else. I'm telling you, you will never feel better in your life. You know, winning as a trader is a great thing and it feels great. But trust me on this, you will never feel better is when you hear from one other person that you help them. Don't be afraid to, to you know, stretch that hand out and, and ask for help from someone in the room. Work together. We can improve each other as a trader if we do that. Thanks, Ed, that's kind, appreciate it. The things that I like to do, um, I always wanna be productive. I always want to be helpful. And the other thing that I think is really important, guys, and 
this is kind of getting uh, I feel like I'm I'm Tony Robbins here so. <laughs> doing a Tony Robbins talk <laughs> and that's not the intention but um I always remind myself how grateful I am for what I have and what I've been able to um, achieve. Um, I'm grateful for what the market has given me. And I have to focus on that a lot because it's so easy to get tainted um, in this kind of kind of industry, um, so so easy to get tainted, where it's all about just you know grabbing the next dollar, and it doesn't care, it doesn't matter who you hurt to do it or any of those kind of things. Um, for me, it's what's what's made trading rewarding for me is helping other people. It's, it's the making the money is great, but it's just making money, okay? It's when we can actually feel like we've helped someone else, when we, when we feel that we have um, shared that gratefulness of what we have learned with someone else. We have helped them improve, and, and in, in the process, we lift ourselves up. You will never learn more about trading than when you start trying to teach it to someone else. When you start trying to help someone else with their trading. Because you think about the details. Now, wait a minute. All of these rules that I've been breaking, I can't do that anymore. I'm trying to help this person. I have to stay committed to my rules. How can I be, how can I lead this person or help this person if I can't help myself, if I don't help myself? Does that make sense? You know, as traders, the lifestyle that we live, even as gloomy as the world is right now, can you, can you believe how, how lucky we are that we can actually make a living Staying at home, turning on a computer. That's just remarkable. We don't actually have to go out and put ourselves at risk in this thing. And, and I am absolutely grateful to be able to do that. To live this lifestyle means um, a lot to me. And to... Um, to be able to work with so many great people um, is the reason I get up at five o'clock every morning. Believe me, if, if it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing a morning market prep video every day. I would still be doing the work myself, but I wouldn't be sharing it. I get up at five o'clock every morning because I have a commitment to try and help as many people as I can and I put that video out. Some it helps, some it probably doesn't, but I do the best job that I can and that makes me feel that what, that my purpose for the day has been, well, at least a small purpose has been fulfilled. Okay, so in this time of a trying market and difficult, difficult price action and all of these things, we can choose to be productive and positive. We can choose to be helpful or we can choose to be that person that distracts everybody, um, tries to puff out it you know puff up their chest that they're the greatest in the world and they're all because we know that that's not true that's not how they really feel 
We can choose to work with someone and help them. We can choose a better path here. And every success in this room, every success in this room is, is, is a success for the rest of us if we all work together, right? If we all help each other, lift each other up and, and all of those things, it helps us all. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You guys are great. I appreciate that so much. Um, so today was kind of a different, a, a different class, but I hope it meant something to you guys that that. We are what we choose to be. And, and if we focus in the right places, if we, if we work to stay productive, I mean, just imagine if you just, after you leave the class today, just sit down with a notepad and write down the top 10 things that you would really like to learn about the market. I mean, you can feel free to ask those questions in the room or you can go on, you know, do a Google search and, and start, start learning it immediately. Those things that are going to improve you as a trader. We can start that right now. And we have the perfect opportunity to do that now. We, we'll, we won't have a better opportunity in the market for a long, long time for the possibility of good value stocks and the um, when, when that market starts to return or to recover, um, we may never see a better opportunity than what we have here. But we have to be ready and we have to be positive or we'll miss it all. We won't be we won't be where we need to be. We won't be mentally prepared to take advantage of it. <laughs> That's the last thing you want, Lauren. <laughs> I'd be tarred and feathered. <laughs> No, I wouldn't. I'm so grateful I don't have to make those decisions. You know, I served on a, a, the city council in Everett, Washington for four terms. I'm grateful. I Honestly, I'm grateful I don't have to make the decisions that those folks are having to make now. <laughs> True that, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to read that for the recording. <laughs> Anyone who wants to be president should be automatically disqualified because they've already shown poor judgment. <laughs> True that. <laughs> so guys, I hope you got something from this today. Um, let's work together. Let's, let's try to stay positive. Let's try to stay focused. Let's, let's be productive. Um, and, um, let's work together because when this, uh, when this thing comes to an end, there's going to just be so much opportunity for us to make if, if we walk, um, if we move on through here, um, and, and do the right job. Uh, Paul, it's called, um, Let's see, Charity Miles, search for Charity Miles. And there's lots of, um, lots of um, charities that you can um, walk for. I just, I choose to work, walk for Wounded Warrior. By the way, guys, this is something you can do and I, I never thought about doing it, but 
under the charity miles thing I can actually create like a a page um, where if you guys don't want to walk but you want to um, if you want to um, donate or something to the miles that I walk then that that gets donated as well Um, the charity miles um, is through uh, corporate sponsors corporate sponsorship is what pays pays the miles hey that's awesome Malcolm so if you um i don't know if anybody if anybody doesn't want to walk and wants to donate or something let me know because i can actually get pledges you could um I, i've never i never even considered doing that i was just going to walk for the corporate sponsor sponsorship thing um um and try to do that according if i read this right according to the app um they've this they've given two hundred and ninety six thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars to wounded warriors. So I found a way to feel good about the time I'm out there walking. I'm out there hiking through the hills and that kind of thing yeah and it's you can do it for um for bike riding um there's several things that you can get donations for for every mile hey that's awesome amy that's that's always a good thing always a good thing hey by the way guys just um here let me 